Spotlight, lectures and performances on and around Albany State University. And thank you all for uh, having me. How about a hand for Dr. Gibson putting this, this is a labor of love. <laughs> My name is Rodney Johnson. A lot of y'all looking at me like I never heard of you. I've been a comedian for 25 years and everywhere I go, people always come up to me. They go, hey man, you're pretty funny. How come I never heard of you? I look at them and say, how come I never heard of you? I don't know why it seems like we, we equate sex, success, success with if or if we do not know you. But I'm here to tell you that uh, I enjoy my job making people laugh. And when they asked me to come down here, the reason, one of the main reasons why was because of the social things that I deal with. And I know a lot of you women are looking at me saying, man, that is a good looking guy. 6'4", 229 pounds. I know you're thinking that to yourself, but I want you to know that I got some issues. I got three ex-wives. I know. Some of y'all thinking, he must be crazy. I got five kids, I got two biological kids, and I got three kids uh, through marriage. But I claim them as my own because they live under my roof at one time or another and I pay for them. And if you live under my roof, you are mine. I don't care what your last name is. I don't even care about your DNA. If you preside under my roof, you mine. If your mama move under my roof, she mine. That's how I've always lived and operated. So when I go across the country and I speak at a lot of these at-risk schools and I talk to the students, I've, I've tried to figure out what is the problem, what's missing, and I found out the problem is men. We don't have enough real men. And that's why you guys are forced to do the things that you're doing because the problem is men have failed. Men have failed the family. And you're probably saying, well, if you've been married three times, how come you've been married three times? And I'm telling you right now, I married women who never understood my role. As a matter of fact, I didn't even understand my role until I got divorced the third time I lost all my stuff. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I didn't realize my, the importance in which I play in the lives of my children and in the lives of my wife. And then I started really looking at some stuff because when you're about to lose your stuff for the third time, you got the question, what is the common denominator? You. So as I'm sitting in my house... But the only thing that was left was a chair. I looked back over my life, all my relationships, and I tried to figure out where the failure was. And then I started writing stuff down. I realized that the common denominator was every woman I ever married never had a father. And since I was raised with a father, I understood my responsibility. I understood my role in life. And so I found myself clashing with the women that I married because they wanted to be me. Because their mother taught them to be me. See, the mother are teaching the single young child woman to be successful. That's what the mothers are teaching them. They're teaching them to be successful. But for some strange reason, the same mother teaches the son to be sorry. That's what you're faced with when you're talking about social work. What are you faced with? You're faced with the problems. You're faced with the ills of society. So I'm looking at my ex-wife trying to figure, how come you don't understand? It is my job to take care of you. It is my job to provide. And I'm doing my job, but you're fighting me because you want the control that I'm supposed to have. I got this. Look, I didn't ask for this. It's birthright. See, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. And what's the first thing he did to Adam? He gave him a job and responsibility. So here it is, I'm Adam, and my wife, well, that was Lot's wife. That's a biblical joke if you understand the word of God. It's, see, Lot's wife did fall up under that, but if they give her a name, then you go, oh, I'm not like that. Because you equate what you're not like according to the name that you see. So I realized in my own life that the problem was I'm fighting the mothers of the children. And then sometimes they will look at me and say, those are not your children. And I say, if they reside under this roof, they mine. And I realized what was missing is what I call the James Evans effect. That's right. If you want to really know what's wrong with the family, look at good times and see how far off we are today as opposed to when that show was created. What most people don't even understand is that show was biblically correct, created right. It was a husband with one wife and all the children from that union. Not like my family, all these different DNAs and all these different personalities. And what I was forced to do, which I didn't know, was to be a social worker in my own house. I didn't know how to deal with all this different DNA. All I knew was this is the direction the men in my house are going, and this is the direction that the women are going, and they were clashing because they got different DNA, different mentalities, they got different things pulling them. And then when I show up at the school, I let the teacher know, oh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, you tell me, I'll take care of this. 
Not, well, don't you be talking about my baby because my baby don't act like that. Your baby just as crazy as you are. See, y'all can't say that. Y'all have to be diplomatic. Well, Mrs. Williams, I'm going to really try to work with you. And really what you're saying is your son is ignorant, you ignorant, and if we could get you, you, you know you want to say that, but you can't. Because you're not really dealing with people, you're dealing with mentalities, and the mentalities you're dealing with are ignorant. And then all of a sudden, when you try to really save somebody, they make you to be the villain. That's how I was feeling in my house. I said, I'm trying to save these kids, and you making me to be the villain? How do you make me be the villain when I'm doing all the things that I'm supposed to do? But you don't understand it. Why? Because she was raised to be independent, make her own decision, make her own money, do her own thing. And then we're supposed to come together and combine it. You know what she told me one time? You do you and I do me. I said, well, when you find that chapter and verse, then I'll do it. You can't do you without doing me. I'm the man. Because society has pushed on us that, you know what, in relationships, they 50-50. Have you heard that, ma'am? Ma'am, have you heard that? See, that's why I'm divorced. You know why? Because it ain't 50-50. It could be 51-49. How can it be 50-50 if I got veto power? But you're saying, I got a degree. I got a master's degree. I make my own money. And don't nobody tell me what to do with my money because it's my money. And you're right. But do it in somebody else's house. Because if you're going to be at 96, 93, it's only one head. See, the church is the same way. It's only one head. But the problem is our society has pushed the agendas to get rid of us. That's why y'all have so much work to do. Because they're trying to get rid of us. Look around. Look at all these women that are social workers. Where the men? You know where the men are? They're prison guards. Protecting your children because we failed when we had the opportunity to right the ship. Now is the time. Now is the time. Look at television. Do you think it's me? Ma'am, do you think it's me? Do you think? Look at television. You can't even watch ESPN unless you see a woman leading the show. All the men sit on the sidelines. Everything that we do, I'm telling you, watch the commercials. Watch when you see the family going to Walt Disney World. The woman talks. The man don't say a word. Because they have annihilated us. They have made us to be we the villain. And women have done the best that they could to keep the thing together, to keep the family together. And every day you watch television, they're taking us out. When was the last time you seen a real father on television? James Evans was the last. There was only two real fathers. James, no, Bill Cosby wasn't no real father. That junk was watered down. Okay, he was a father, but it was watered down. Come on now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know, you know, you never saw Bill Cosby get mad. You never saw him get it. James Evans got mad. Did you see him? James Evans was the real father. I, 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 and look, I'm not, I'm not upset with Bill Cosby. I'm not upset saying that you can't be a doctor. I, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, sir, back me up on this. If you was in trouble at school, who you want to come on your side, James Evans or Bill Cosby? Thank you. You know it's James Evans. Two real fathers that were on television, James Evans and Archie Bunker. That's right. Because at the end of the day, it was his house. At the end of the day, he laid down the rules in his house. At the end of the day, he got up to provide for his house. I don't care if you understand how his mind works socially. That's not what I'm here about. What I'm talking about is a man standing up saying, in my house, this is the way we're going to do it. See, most of y'all say, well, how come a man calls it his, it's his house? Because it is. See, Joshua said, as for me in my house, this is what we're going to do. He didn't say nothing about my daddy's house, my mama house. He said, as for me and my house, this is what we're going to do. And there's a lot of men, they can't say that. You know why? Because they in your house. And you gave them the key. And you let them in. And you now mad at him, but you did it. And I said, I try to figure out why are women of the day settling for men that are not even worthy enough to hold their hand? Why do they do it? And I, feel, I found out why. Because there's no role model. They don't, they don't know. They didn't see it. See, most people think that there's two things a woman can do for a man. It is either make love or cook. That's not it. The two things a woman can do for a man is either encourage him or destroy him by the words that come out of her mouth. That's the only reason why we get up. You think I'm playing? You think this is not real? 
Listen, I'm 6'4". I was on a cruise ship. I work on cruise ships for Royal Caribbean. I was playing basketball with some of the passengers. The guy was five foot five. Every time he would come into the middle, I would spike his shot. I would throw it. Then I'd talk big man, talk to him. Don't bring that up in here, yo. You don't know who you fooling with. And he would keep coming. He would keep coming. And I would keep throwing the ball. Keep coming. I threw the ball. Then one moment, his wife showed up. She was up on the balcony. And he started backing me down. You know what he said to me? Don't block my shot. Don't block my shot. And so I didn't, because I saw his woman. I didn't want to embarrass him. So he took me to the hole. And then his woman said, that's right, baby. Take that big man to the hole. And that's when I said, don't come back up in here no more, OK? Because you got to realize that we rise to your occasion. We only do stuff to impress you. We don't do stuff to impress it. Come on, dog. Me and you, we homeboys. He didn't look at me and see, see what I was wearing, talking about, yo, dog, that suit nice. And I said, yo, dog, that jacket nice. We don't care. We don't care about that stuff. You know what we care about? When you see us. That's when we, matter of fact, when y'all see us, our whole walk and talk change. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Hey, look here, look here. I was over there, right? And I saw, oh, hey, let me, no, no, I'm serious, I'm serious, I'm serious. Every time a guy on television does something great, who's he sending the first shout out to? When last time you seen a dude on television score a touchdown talking about, hey, dad? No, it don't happen. It goes to his mother. Why? Because we rise to the occasion. So when I hear women talk about there's no good men out there, I say, yes, they are. It's what are you saying to him? Because if you notice something about James Evans, no matter what he went through, what did Florida do? Always support him. Always. Remember, he would go get a new job. He would come out with that suit that was so small and so tight that if he exhaled, it would pop a button. And she'd be like, baby, you look good. I know you're going to get that job. Because you know why? Because she knew if she wanted to survive, he had to go out there and work for it. But see, today, y'all don't have to do that. Matter of fact, most of y'all leave and leave James Evans laying in the bed. Most of y'all get up and go to work. Sometimes he drop you off in your car. And then he don't even come back to pick you up on time. But you so starving for a man and a man's attention. Why? Because you didn't have that growing up. See, if you was my daughter, I would have told you how beautiful you were from the time you were six months old. So by the time you got 18, a dude had to have more conversation than you beautiful. He had to have some, where direction are you going? Where are we going? What are we going to do? What can I do to make your life better? But we don't have that. Why? Because we, we, we're settling and we're not developing, and we're not encouraging. See, the women of the day are raising their sons, so when you get with her son, it's normal for him to allow you to do what you've been doing. He don't even know. He don't even know that he's supposed to have his name on the mortgage first. Because he was at his mama's house, and his mama said, you my man. So he thought, since I'm her man, this is what a man does. A man lets you do whatever the heck you want to do. And then you get frustrated with him. And then you meet me. And then when you meet me, you tell me, I'm a, I'm, can you control it? You a trip. No, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. Do you hear know what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to make sure that life is easier for you. That's what I'm supposed to do. See, even my youngest son, you know, he's my, he's my, uh, my second wife's son, but he was mine. I got him when he was four. But at about 15, he decided he wanted to go live with his grandmother. And his mother co-signed on it. And I said, son, this is not in the best interest of you. He said, well, I don't like the way you do things around here. I said, well, then get out. That's right. See, if you are doing what you're supposed to do, you can tell them, get out. Don't worry about the consequences. Don't worry about the aftermath. Don't worry about See, men don't worry about that. When men live right and are trying to do the best they can, they don't worry about all the stuff that's jacked up. I said, son, if you don't want to live here and follow my rules, then I would advise your mother and your biological father to figure a place for you to go. But if you're going to live here, you're going to do what I tell you to do. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Why? Because if he learns how to obey in my house, he will obey in your classroom. He will obey in your college. He will obey in your community. He will obey because he will understand authority that starts at home. But if he punk me in my own house, he going to kill you in your classroom. That's what's wrong with society, because we don't want to discipline. We want to encourage them by reinforcing something that's positive that is negative. 
I told my son, take the trash down. He said he didn't want to take the trash down. I said, son, you got two options. You got the option to take that trash down or you got the option to leave here. But you can't stay here and tell me what you ain't going to do when I didn't pay for the food, pay for the electric to cook the food, pay for the roof that's connected to the electric. And you're going to tell me and then your mama going to say, I'm too hard on you. What do you think they're going to do to you on the other side of that door? You want a man or do you want a weakling? Which one do you want? Because you can't have both. You can't have both. And so he moved to his grandmother's house and he failed. And he didn't speak to me for three years because he was angry at me. Because I told him, I said, son, you will never make it in life until you learn to make decisions for yourself. Women make decisions because they have a maternal instinct. And women, I do not discredit that. I understand it. I know how much you love your kids. Jeffrey Dahmer, mama was in the courtroom every day with her son. Jeffrey Dahmer was the dude that was eating people. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make, he was eating people and they knew it, but his mom, that was her son. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not discrediting you. I'm telling you that if you want to save the children, you got to let the men do their job. I had a woman, she's a very successful entertainer. Her name was Chiro. She got the big breasts. She got the big dress named Chiro. We worked together some time and she was having problems with her son because she was very successful. She was, so she had bought her son his third BMW and he had just totaled his third one. And she was frustrated. She didn't know what to do with her 21-year-old son. And I'm sitting there with her, listening to her complain and then try to reason with her 21-year-old son who's not working but living in her house because she's successful. So she hangs up the phone and she says, I don't know what to do with my son. And I looked at her. I said, I can help you with your son if you want some help. She says, how can you help me nobody has ever been able to help me with my son I said whatever hurts you will be good for him and I walked away and an hour later her husband came up to me and said that is the first time somebody's ever said anything to her about our son and she listened because I told her I said listen you want to do for your child because it's your child but whatever hurts you it's going to be good for him See, putting my son out was good for him. He didn't speak to me for three years. Now, what mother would, would, be, would be okay with her child not speaking for three years? Not nail one of y'all. That's why you got to have a father. Because the father would say, I don't care if he don't ever speak. And if he come back here, the first thing he's going to do is take out this trash. <laughs> Sir, are you with me on this? You know I'm telling the truth. Listen, because I made my son take out the trash, he left my house. He went to his grandmother's house. She believed that if she gave him everything he wanted, that he would be successful. Not only did he not graduate, but he failed. So he went into the Air Force and he spent four years out. And I finally connected to him because one day in church, the pastor was saying, if you've had a relationship that is broken, I want you to go back and fix it. I don't care who's right. I don't care who's wrong. Go back and repair and fix the relationship. And so I called my son and I said, son, I'm here to tell you that no matter what has happened in our lives, I still love you. I'm still here to support you. And do you know that when he answered the phone, my son was on the brink of suicide do you understand how powerful our jobs are do you understand that men have to step to the plate and women got to support the play of the man or we will lose the family and y'all will stay in business year in and year out because we'll lose him my son was on the brink of suicide killing himself because he said dad all I wanted was a man to step up and tell me I am going in the right direction and I said son you had it but your mother got in the way of it and you went down the easy road because there's always two roads in life there's the easy road and the hard road and if you take the easy road you coming back to that hard road it's to that point where they had to go over and some people got to the wall and they got scared and they didn't have nobody to, to give them the strength to go over. So they said, I'm going to take a semester off. And that was, twi what, 15 years ago? You know I'm telling the truth. So when you get to that wall, you got to have people to help you get over the wall, under the wall, around the wall, or through the wall. But you got to keep going. And mothers, sometimes y'all help the boys to derail. But when it comes to your daughter, you tell her, oh, no, baby, you won't finish this. And look at all of y'all. I go to my church right now and I see all the women and they're all successful. They're all doctors and lawyers and dentists and, and their husbands are all consultants. You know what a consultant is? It's a professional word for I ain't got no job. But if I tell you I'm a consultant, I can get away with it. It's like being 35 years old and still in school. Hey, I'm in school. We give you a pass. I don't mind if you're in school, you're getting your master's, your PhD, but you shouldn't be in school trying to get your associate at 35 years of age. At some point, ladies, a man has to have a career. 
My mother-in-law, she was getting ready to get married to this guy. She said, Rodney, I want you to go in there and talk to him and tell me what you think. And I went in there and talked to the man for five minutes and I came out. And I said, do you love him or are you in love with him? She says, what difference does it make? I said, well, depending on what you tell me, I'll give you my answer. She said, I'm in love with him. I said, well, then marry him and be happy. She said, what if I told you I just loved you? I said, well, then I would tell you to leave him alone. She said, how can you tell? You only was in there five minutes. I said, I said sweetheart, you know the, the expression game recognizes game. See, a man recognizes another real man. We know a perpetrator. This dude was a perpetrator. You said, well, how can you tell he was a perpetrator? Because he was 49 years old living in his mama house. And he didn't just get there. He was comfortable. And he was putting in the job application at Walmart. My kids put in applications. My men don't put in applications. They send out resumes. You got to understand there's a difference. And if y'all keep on letting these sorry men think they men, that's why we keep getting children of illegitimate families because you lay down with the joker with no intent of finding success. There's no success. Look around. Look around. Look at all the ills that we're dealing with. It comes from the broken down family. I know somebody's going to be talking about sex trafficking. Where does it come from? It comes from a father not being vigilant over his family. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Y'all heard about the preacher that was molesting the boys? He wouldn't have done it on my watch because he could have gave my son a pair of shoes, but you would have best believed me, my son, and the shoes would have been in his office. Why are you giving my child these shoes? Now, if you give them to the whole congregation, okay, but if you're picking out children, I'm letting you know this is mine. You ain't, do you understand? We got to be that vigilant for our families. I'm crazy. I'm telling you right now, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. You ain't going to mess over. Matter of fact, you can't mess over nobody in my family because I'm paying attention. Matter of fact, I am so deadly, I have killed the people in my own family. Because they have tried to annihilate my house. My daughter wanted to sell drugs. I said, you can't come back in my house. I'm not going to lose my house because you want to sell drugs. When there has been nothing in my life that says sell drugs and my daddy going to be okay with it. I haven't given you that example. I haven't been drunk. I haven't been a womanizer. I've been home. I've been accountable. I've been in church. I'm a part of the community. And you're going to sell drugs and think you're going to come back at my house. You can't come in my house. That's my daughter. She went to jail for selling drugs. And she said, Daddy, come get me. I said, I didn't put you in there. You need to be around the people who put you in there. Ask them to come get you. I can't come get you. And then she started crying, talking about, Daddy, Daddy, you my daddy. How are you not going to get me out? I said, how did you get there? How did you get there? I didn't put you there. Now, some of y'all probably saying, well, how did she get there? You know why she got there? Because the house was divided. My house was divided. The Bible says a house divided will fall. It will. My house was divided. You know why? Because my, my wife at the time, she believed in everything that came out of the mouths of the kids, although she knew they were lying, but she was a mother. And that's why I'm saying, ladies, I don't fault you for trying to really be there with your children, but sometimes you got to look at the truth. And one thing about me, I always paid attention to my kids and my daughter. I had a daughter that was, she wanted to be wild. And I, look, folks, don't get me wrong. I don't mind being wild. I don't mind. It's our job to catch you in your wildness to straighten it out. Why are you in my house? Because if I don't catch it in my house, when they get to your campus, they are going to terrorize your campus. So my daughter, she came to me one day. She said, Daddy, I need a school shirt. I'm old school. I don't know about y'all. I had my kids young, but I'm still old school because I got James Evans mentality. I said, baby, where's the permission slip to get the school shirt? Because in my day, to do something for the school, they would have a permission slip. She told me, daddy, don't nobody do that. You're so old fashioned. I said, well, if you want this $30 for the school shirt, you better give me a permission. Tell them to make one up. Just send it to me. So like I said, as a comedian, I'm on the road. So I was on a ship one week, and a father and a husband does not forget. He don't forget. So as I'm on the trip, as I'm coming back home, I realize I said, my daughter needs $30 for a t-shirt, and I said, I need to do this. So I get back home, and I said to my daughter, I said, baby, did you get that permission slip? She said, don't worry about it, daddy. Mommy gave me the money. So I go to my wife, and I say, hey, baby. I know you gave her the money for the shirt, but did you see the permission slip? What? Why I got to have a permission slip? 
Oh my God, see Rodney, that's what, so, that's what being married to you was so taxing. I gotta, I gotta get your permission. My daughter came to me, she wanted $30 for a t-shirt. I gave her the $30, I had the $30. I didn't go into our account, I didn't go into your account, I didn't go into the savings account, I had $30. Can I not give my daughter $30 to get a shirt without you coming and questioning me about did I see it? No, I didn't see a permission slip. I asked her, did you see the permission slip? She cussed me out, and I'm trying to save your daughter so you ain't crying. But you don't see that, because you're a mother. So she gets the shirt. I see it. I said, that's the school shirt? I said, they don't even have the school colors. What, what kind of school pet rally shirt is that? And it got like a little nickname on there, like Miss Wannabe or something crazy on the back of the shirt. So then my wife looked at me and said, is there a problem? You thought she was going to take the money and do something else with it? She got the shirt. Again, making me to be the villain in my own house. And all I'm trying to say is, hey, I'm just trying to do my job. I'm just trying to get him to 18 and get him out of here. My daughter's curfew at that time, she was in high school, was 1 o'clock. She had to be in the house at 1 o'clock. My daughter never came in past 1 o'clock. She always came in on time. Never once did she come in past 1 o'clock. She come in 12.57, 12.58, 12.59. But not one time did she ever come in. Matter of fact, sometimes it'd be 12.30. She'd be sitting in front of the house. She wouldn't even come in until 12.59. But she never came in past 1 o'clock. And as a father, I pay attention. These are mine. And you're not going to destroy my family because if I slip and something happened to my daughter, I now got to deal with the pain of my wife for the rest of my life. So I, I, I'm, I'm vigilant. So one night my daughter comes in at 11.35. And I look at my wife and I say, something ain't right. And she got mad at me again. Oh, my God. Oh, you're killing me. If she was late, you have a problem. She early, you have a problem. When do you not have a problem? I said, listen, something ain't right. And my daughter comes up, and she said, hey, mom, hi, dad. I said, hey, baby, everything all right? She said, yeah. I said, okay. I don't question her. She said, everything is fine. So she basketball because I can hear what's going on in the community from the fellas because they talk a lot. And since I still got a little game, now I can only jump two inches off the ground. I can't get up like I used to, but I can still, I still got the, I got the way to communicate with them. So the young man said, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, your daughter tell you about that fight last night? I go, no, what fight? He said, she didn't tell you about the fight? I said, no, man, what fight? She said, oh, man, hey, man, man, it was deep, man. He said, look, man, look, your daughter, she running with these girls. They got this same T-shirt on. I don't know, it's this funny color. She got a little name on it. They got this little crew, right? And what happened was one of the girls in the crew got into a fight with another girl from another school. So all of them with the same T-shirt on jumped on and beat that girl up. And that girl called her boyfriend. Her boyfriend came back up to the party and shot the other boy, two boyfriends of that girl. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell y'all this afternoon? That is my job. And I'm telling my wife look at what could have happened to our child she could have died last night because you didn't want to get a permission slip and you want to make me feel like I'm the enemy in my own house when all I'm trying to do is get your kids to graduation that's all I'm trying to do I'm trying to make the teacher's job easy by my child coming down there and sitting down there and acting like they got some sense and you telling me I'm wrong because I wanted a permission slip I'm wrong because I question you because you didn't get it and then she gonna walk in here at 11 35 when she ain't never came in the house early I said girl you dumb that you're too stupid to be a criminal. If anything, I would have came in at 1 o'clock. All because of a t-shirt. Two people were shot because of a t-shirt. Because all I asked for was a permission slip. And I got to be the villain. And you want to know why we got problems? Because we're not paying attention to what our daughters are wearing when they walk out of the house. We're not paying attention to who our children are hanging with when they walk out of the house. That's why they're being kidnapped. That's why they're being molested. That's why they're being raped. And I know today, you don't even know which way to go. You can't turn to the president. You can't turn to the preacher. You can't turn to the principal because everybody's taking the village. Everybody's vilifying. So you say, well, who can we trust? You ought to be able to trust the man that's under the roof of your house. And so when I go across the country and I speak, it, it, it's serious. It's serious. Why? Because the real men are being so vilified that they give up. 
And that's why my marriages failed, because I had to give up. Even a boxer has somebody in the corner to help him get up to go back into the fight. It's hard to get into the fight when you're the only one trying to train yourself you know, motivate yourself, work out for yourself because the people in the house and the kids, they sided with the mother. Why? Because it was easier. It was easier to side with the mother. You didn't have to side with me because it was going to be too difficult because if you side with me, it requires you to do something. And it's everywhere I would go, even when it came down to my own biological son. Biological son didn't speak to me for five years. Y'all hear what I just said? Five years, my son didn't speak to me because his mother told him I didn't pay child support. And it was something he really wanted. And she said, when I get the child support check, I get it. And she said the check didn't come. And so he had an attitude with me. He was 13 years old. And he called me and said, Dad, I just don't, don't want to spend no more summers with you. And I said, son, what's the problem? He said, yeah, I'm just, I just don't want to spend them. And, that's, that's, and then his mother said, but don't, don't, don't force them. Just let it come naturally. I said, well, this ain't natural. My son don't want to see me. He don't want to spend time with me. He, what, what's the problem? Well, he'll tell you when he's ready. No 13-year-old has enough sense to tell you when he's ready. So my son, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't come around. So five years later, he's about to graduate from high school. So I go up there to the graduation because my mother wanted to go. And I said, well, Ma, you know, I ain't really talked to him in the last few years. But also, I'm, I don't want y'all to think I didn't pay the child support. I still paid it. Them five years, I paid the checks every month. Now, was I late? Yeah, because I have a job where I don't know when I'm going to get paid sometime, but I always paid. If I, was, if I was late, I would double up, or I would send two in advance, but I would always pay the money. I never missed. Never missed. And so I go up there to see my son, and we talk some things over, and he said, well, Dad, I want to I wanna hang out with you for a week, and I want to come down, because he had never been to my house in Atlanta. So I said, well, son, come on down. And so when he got down to the house, <clears throat> We started talking about what his issue was. And he said, Dad, uh, my issue with you is that you, you didn't pay child support. I said, who told you that? He said, my mom told me that. Now, see, what I didn't know was the mother did not want to look weak or she wasn't capable. So she would blame the child support checks on me for when she couldn't get whatever he needed. Now, I don't know all this is going on, but that's what the problem was. So when he would want something he really wanted, she would say, when the check come, I'll, come, I'll get it. Well, he never knew when the check came because she didn't tell him. But see, see you understand what I'm saying? They, they work against you. And that's why I'm telling men, stay true. Stay focused to the game, player. If it's the truth, just live in the truth. If, it, if, it, if it's two years or 20 years, whatever, you just, just stay the course. That's what we got to do. We got to be men. We got to be men. We got to be vigilant. We got to stay the course. So I looked at my son. I said, you mean to tell me that you haven't talked to me for the last five years because your mother told you I didn't pay child support. You never asked me that. You never said nothing to me. But your problem with me is you say I didn't pay. Now, what he don't know about me is that my grandfather had a third grade education, y'all, from North Carolina. Tall like this. Y'all know people don't know like this. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about that. granddad told. That's how my granddad told. They don't know like You don't understand what he said, but you understand that my granddad. That's what he told. And my grandfather didn't have an education. He only went to third grade. He was a sharecropper, worked in the fields, then he worked at General Motors, cleaning the building for 40 years to take care of his family. My grandfather told me this. He said, son, a man only needs to know three things in life. I said, pop, what is that? He said, count your own money, keep a receipt, and take care of your woman. That's all my grandfather ever told me. He said, you take care of her, she'll take care of everything else. So I kept a receipt. So I had all the child support receipts I had ever sent his mother from the time he was born. And I laid them out in the basement on the floor according to the years and the months. So I had 18 rows of checks. Did you hear what I just said, folks? This is our job. If you can't be in the house, support the house. I got 18 rows of checks on the floor. And so my son comes downstairs. I said, look at that. He said, what's that? I said, these are my child support checks. And he looked at them and he said, uh, I see that you paid. I said, no, nah, son, it's something else down here that's deeper than me just paying. I want you to look at it and tell me what you see. He said, well, daddy, I see that you paid. I said, no, nah, son, find the message in all these child support checks on this floor. And I said, you cannot come upstairs until you figure it out. And my son was down there for three hours. Three hours. 
looking at these checks and he said daddy I don't see it you pay you proving your point my mom lied you prove your point I said no son you didn't talk to me for five hours five years at least you can stand down here longer and see what I'm trying to express and show to you since you don't want to talk to a man you want to just believe what people say I want you to stand it and my son stood down there for five hours and finally I went downstairs he was sitting down because he was tired of standing and I said son look at this this is 18 years of child support checks that I paid for you. Do you notice that some of these are money orders? Look at where they came from. See, when I was on the road, no matter where I was, I knew I had a son. So I would send a money order. This say Dallas. This say Memphis. This say Minnesota. And you see this column? See this column? It was only eight checks this year. You know why? Because I didn't work every week, but I always doubled up. Look at the amounts. And you see right here? This is when I didn't have an account because your mother sued me for some stupid stuff. And I had to put my money in my father's account. But my father... Father sent the checks every month for you. That's our job. And if we do our job, we can save these kids. And I need the women of the world to stand up and make that dude rise to a level that he don't even know he's capable. Because if you make us rise, we will soar above all the problems that you're faced with. And I looked at my son. I said, don't you ever, ever, ever judge a man until you talk to him. Because when you talk to them, you can then equate for yourself what you choose to believe. Don't you depend on them to get you where you're going. You got to depend on it yourself. You got to depend on your own ability. And your ability is predicated on what I instill in you. The same things my father instilled in me. It's the James Evans effect. And if you want to save these kids, we got to go to the home and find out what's happening here. We can't be so hard on the kids because the kids didn't, they didn't ask to be here. The parents made a choice. And then the kids become a product of all the brokenness and all the empty promises and all the failures that stem from us. Stem from us. And that's why when I get an opportunity to go around, I just share, I, I don't know, some people may agree, some people may disagree. And really, to be honest with you, I care. I care whether you agree or disagree, but as long as it opens up dialogue between people and we communicate one to another, we can save our children, we can get these kids out of prostitution, we can get these kids out of being homeless, we can get these kids, really, do you know what really, the, 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 you know what it really boils down to the kids? Feeling wanted. I have a biological daughter and I have a daughter that I raised and my daughter that I raised is 26 years old and I've been there with her since she was five years old, but she still longs for her biological daddy to tell her, you matter. And she always tells me, she said, daddy, I don't know why I keep drinking the Kool-Aid. You've been a great father to me. And I said, baby, no matter how great I am, you always want to be received by your own. Turn to your neighbor. I just felt like I just had to make you laugh a little bit just to, just to break it up just a little bit. As any good church I've ever been in, the preacher always says, <laughs> any good church I've ever been in, the preacher will say this, this and I'm finished. This and I'm finished. And they never finish, do they? They never finish. They go, this, if you would just give me just a few more moments, this and I'm finished. If you would just allow me just a little bit more latitude, let me, let me just wrap up this point right here. If you would just give me a few more moments, I'm going to finish this up because I don't want you to leave until you understand this point. If you would just allow me to just, just bear with me just a few more moments, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way to, to fix this up, to bring it home. I'm, I, I, I want to put a period on it right here, but, the, but I just can't put the period on it. But if, if you would just give me a few more moments, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the period on this thing right now. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fix it up and, and give it to you in a way that would... And and some of y'all didn't catch that. You'll catch that on your way home. And I'm like, how come I didn't catch it here? Why do I got to catch it on my way home? If you had said it the right, come on, Dr. Gibson. I'm, I'm wrapping up now. Come on now. If you got to come get me off, I, I don't know when to stop because I, I feel I got some pressing more work to do. I, I feel like I, 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 I. <laughs> Hey, thank y'all for listening, man. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.